What's up everybody? I'm back and in today's video I'm gonna show you what I do when I get like a used boat. So this is a used Dagger Phantom. I want to do some cleanup as you can see. I just got the boat. It's in pretty decent, you know, not the best shape, but it's not bad. And I want to show you all exactly what I do when I get a boat, how I outfit it, how I clean it up. So this is going to be more like a restore type video i guess so it's going to be more kind of like used to restore kind of get it and restore it so we'll go ahead and look over the boat real quick this is a dagger phantom and i've owned several phantoms over the time so this is nothing new to me i love the phantom it's a great boat i'm going to start paddling it more and this is the kind of custom 30th anniversary edition color the red with lines through it not the biggest fan of that but you know what it's okay i'll take it. it it doesn't look too bad that's called the river going down the middle there but yeah you can see it's definitely been paddled um it's seen some abuse it's seen some abuse and some use so it's kind of scratched up it's beat up. tape up over the screw heads you know they the back band's looking kind of worn the stern wall looks to be all caddy cornered in there this little thing's broke off more scratches on it it's got a little bit of a stern piton here and a little bit of split, but I'm going to actually weld that up so I can put a quick weld on that and probably heat this and maybe even get that little little dent out right there. You can see it, it must have come off and teetered and like stern um, pitoned on something right there and got dent up, but I think I can fix that. I think I can fix that pretty easy. Yeah, going on back band, it needs some outfitting, bulkheads in good shape, hull's in pretty good shape no cracks no welds on the hull looks good the boat looks good so what i'm going to do i'm going to go over with you guys about what i do as far as like cleaning a boat up if I... boat's a couple years old maybe two years old so yeah first thing i'm going to do is take all of the outfitting out i'm going to take these bars off i actually have some bars i'm going to remove i'm going to remove these scratched up bars put bars on it take all the outfitting out and clean the hull up and try to repair this part and then clean up the outfitting and put it back in and re-outfit it for my for my taste you know whoever was piling it you know i'm going to outfit it better for me and i'm going to show you guys like what i do so you can see i have a little leftover dagger outfitting kit here so i have a little outfitting kit that has about everything i need in it and the tools that i'm going to need i'm going to need some sort of drill which i have a drill with a phillips head bit for the thigh braces a number 10 box wrench so open end wrench or as maybe our um, british friends called the spanner maybe it's called a spanner wrench a ratchet so this this ratchet i'll show you guys why i need this ratchet this is for the front bow step out pillar that's a number 10 deep well this is a torx 25 security bit if you see it's the torx 25 i don't know if you can see it in the camera but it has the hole in the end of it so it's a t25 security bit a number four driver bit so that number four driver bit will go in here but i also have a backup you know tool that come with the boat a flathead screwdriver and i'll show you what i use that flathead screwdriver a, a wide one too just a backup bit um some cheap knife for cutting outfitting you know just some little outfitting knife spray 90 i love my spray 90 some of this purple power stuff i really like this stuff this stuff is what i clean the boats with i'll spray it down and then wash it off and clean the boats with that and then last once i get everything done i'll go over my boats with a 303 and 303 protectant is amazing for um, polyethylene plastic so that's pretty much everything that i use and you can see i have some spare bars here for that i'm going to change out i found some some new knobs i just cleaned these bars up i had um i had a, a another kayak that had blown apart it had blown apart and i had some spare bars on it so there you go i got some extra bars which i can replace all right so so to get started what i'm going to start with first i think first i'm going to go ahead and remove the seat out of this and i'll walk you guys through the process that i use to remove the seat out of any dagger boat first thing i'm going to do is get the number four driver bit Right away, I'm going to take out the back band first. I'm going to take the hip pads out first, actually. Hip pads come out, two little hooks on the side. 
they're velcroed in right there. You got a right side hip pad and a left side. They're just held in by two little little clips. Pretty easy to take dagger hip pads out. Set those hip pads aside. Back band, back band what I do is just hold the ratchet and I'm just gonna kind of bang on it, get the ratchets out, unhook it down here. I done unhook these two. That's the back band. I do have a replacement back band, so luckily I do have a new back band, so I'll replace that back band, even though that's in pretty good shape. I could probably use that somewhere else along the line too. So now we're pretty much down to this. It looks like looks like the wall has been kicked over. So I will go ahead and take that back wall out. Shut up. This little, the wall's held in by a bracket right here. Did you hear it fall? See? So I've got a little replacement knob for that too. Set that over there. There's the bracket. And I'm going to glue that back into the wall. You can see, see how the, how the bracket fell out right there? Just like that. It fell over and it looked like they tried to kick it back over. So I've got the stern wall out. Kick that aside. It's nice to get all your tools kind of lined out so that way you can you can work on it a little more. Now, dagger boats are held in by two screws going into a plate. So what I'm going to do, I loosen one side, not all the way, loosen that side. Now I take that one all the way out, that one all the way out. There's the plate. The plate, the two seat bolt screws. And that's why that table comes in handy, because I can put everything right there on the table. And if you drop the plate down inside the seat, you can rattle your boat and get that brass plate out of there. Take the screws completely out. Seat's still not ready to come out. This one, step out filler, you want to be careful with. Never, never over tighten that. So that step out peel pillar step out Peter so the step out pillar is a um, is a 30 mil number six I think's the number six on these screws it's a metric so all these bolts are metric now I can take the wall out uh, now I can take the seat out what I do I slide the seat back turn it to now normally there's some um, some foam padding on the side to keep the seat but it looks like these have fell out Looks like somebody just crammed some extra in there, and that actually looks like an old. That looks like possibly a liquid logic, maybe. You guys leave in the comment below if you know what kind of foam bulkhead that is. It, to me, it looks like liquid, liquid logic foam. Could be piranha. Leave in the comments if you know what that is. I don't know. Maybe I do know. So once I get that out, you can see. You can see how the foam's moved around on this, so that's why I'm taking this out. I'm going to re-glue all the foam padding back on this, to, to that way it's not on plastic on plastic. It'll be the foam cushion in there. Seat's still in pretty good shape. A small crack right there, but I think it's fine. These little things. I'll clean these up. Set those aside. Now comes the, the step out pillar, which is where the number the number 10 deep well comes in. So that's a deep well socket number 10. You can see what it is. There's a number. And here's what's going on. You notice that screw didn't come out. And the reason for that is there's another nut holding that in there. So the way they do it is it's a, a nut, a screw going through the security bar into a, a washer into another nut. So what I can do is take those off. I can use a driver bit, but normally you'll just kind of do it like that. And you see I got, there's both sides. This is not easy. This is going to be where you guys might struggle a little bit, but you see, take those off. Do not lose those. You're gonna need these. So do not, like I almost did, do not lose those. 
now that just pops out you see that so there's the entire step out pillar and these cut lines you can see the cut lines for different boats the same step out pillar is using a lot make sure you have your foam there that foam is very important on a step out pillar by the way because if not it's plastic on plastic and that is never a good thing the bow wall and the bulkhead yeah so this is a newer one the older ones had bungee and all that crap holding these tow cups in there that one's still in pretty good shape so now I'm gonna pull those two rubber washers which are mostly useless now I'll go ahead and remove the security bar and here's the thing you want to be careful with using a driver you can overheat this like I just did so now this side got really hot so I'm gonna hand I'm gonna try to hand break it that that nut off of there I might end up having to cut the screw this does happen by the way what happens is the plastic gets melted inside of it I got it now I will be replacing that bolt what I wanted to do you can see the shape of that security bar that's why I wanted to replace that security bar so we'll take that off take these little things off it is freaking hot out here today that's that southeast humidity heat temperature wise it's not it's not like super hot today maybe 80 but that damn humidity you'll sweat just sitting here all right almost done put this stupid gorilla tape on here all right, so now the thigh braces. There's a, these are used well nuts. That's what's on the inside. You can hold that with your hand. You wanna be careful not to spin the head of your screws out. This one has a, like a little T-bolt. Great, I love it when that happens. So that's spinning in there, so I'll be right back. So when this happens, I just get some needle nose. You, you don't want to cross thread this one either. What it is, it's a stupid T-bolt. I am not a fan of this thigh brace. So, I want to get some vice grips to get that off. That's the way it's supposed to happen. You can see what happens over time. That's where I'll spray 90 of these back on. That just kind of falls apart. So I'll put those back on there too. So that's big trouble. So when that happens, you're in big trouble. I'm gonna have to get a Dremel and cut the screw. I might be able to do it with a hacksaw. I'm just gonna cut through the screw and pull the it off. The screw head broke off, but you can see right here, 
that's cross threaded and I think it was cross threaded when it when it, it's been like that for a while I didn't cross thread it because it wouldn't come off so I'm gonna actually cut that screw off and replace it so you see what happened here I'm gonna try to I got some bolt cutters check this out let's see if we can get the problem is that goofy washers right there yeah see that that's a quick way to get these bolts especially if I already had the bolt out if I couldn't have got to that you can see what I did I had a hacksaw I was gonna cut it that way I think I could have got in it I would have took the blade off if I would need to and cut it but I didn't but those are little things you kind of have to be prepared for but now now that I got the boat completely cleaned out, I'm gonna go through and wash it. I'm gonna wash it with the water hose, clean it up, and try to like maintenance a little bit before I put the outfitting back together. So yeah, let's go do that now. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. So this is the, the, the Torx, the T25 security bit. That's that, and that's gonna take off. You need that to get these, these grab handles off. You can see how what kind of shape these are in. So I'm just, you know, I don't have to replace these. I could actually just paint them. They'd be fine, but I have some, so I'm put I'm going ahead and replacing them. These do in theory have Loctite on them. You can see that these had Loctite, the blue Loctite. So these had it on it. Yeah, that has Loctite on it too, so good job on Dagger putting their Loctite on there. Now's where I'm going to use this purple power stuff. This is pretty safe for plastic. So once I kind of like put that purple power on there, get it wet down, I'll go and I'll just kind of like wash it wash it off not a lot in here normally I'll go through and I'll vacuum it out and by the way even if it's not a used boat you know you should do this to your boat about every other year or so every other year or so I do a complete like rebuild reconstruction on my boat anyway I know it sounds dumb some of you guys are probably out there thinking what in the hell why would I do that well I just like doing it call me crazy I've been called worse that's for sure I'll just kind of wipe up that inside all right the seat seats in decent shape Still has an insert in it. Show y'all what I'm gonna do here. Spray 90. All right, that's padding for the seat. Seat's padded back out. I'm not going through the trouble of hot melt glue in this. Drop it in there. Pound it. And it is kind of wet. If it's nice and wet in there like that, you can get a you can turn the wall. So I'm going to turn that wall in between those inserts. Line it up. want to use a hand screwdriver with this by the way don't do what I'm doing that little button all right walls in there by the way in the phantom I run my seat about one inch back I'm going to put the bulkhead in. I want to 
put that that security bar back on. Make sure you put those washers on there. If you don't, and then you ever use this to clip into, it'll pull right out. Go real slow if you're doing it with one of these. First, I'm going to put the bow foam wall in. Then I'm going to put this up there like that and just line these bolts up. This is never the easiest thing to do, but you can do it. There you go. I lined the the, the two bolts that came through here, I lined them up with the bulkhead, I mean the step out. Right, now I'm going to go ahead and put, now that I have the wall in there, what I do, I get this hand started. That side gets so That's actually the upside. I can tell by feeling of them. That's called a one inch fender washer for anybody that wants to know. I don't know if you care, but I'm telling you anyway. So I get them, I get them started by hand. And all I do is hold that, then get my, my socket wrench. My number 10, once you get it started, and that's how you want to tighten that wall up. Same way, once you get one side tightened, the other one's gonna go a lot easier. Don't it feel good when a bolt, when a nut goes up on a bolt? It's one of the best feelings. When you get it right, it feels so perfect. Line my step up pillar out. I'm putting that back in there. Remember, just hand tighten that. You don't have to go super tight on that. You will spin that insert out. I'm just cleaning these things up. Woo, that's hot. Ow. This material is called, I think this is called Hyperlon, Hyperlan. And this is where that screwdriver is coming into play. I'm going to put that screwdriver right there like that. You see what it's doing? How it's holding that up? get that plate and there you go so I get that first screw through there and I had to get right between those between this material right there so now that I'm through that material, I want to go that, because think of the, the seat sliding that way. This is something you want to start one side at a time. Once I get one side started, then I'll do the other one. Now I want to put the thigh braces in. With the thigh braces, what I like to do is start up here with this one first. I grab that T-nut.
there is supposed to be a little washer in there but I don't think it does that much I'm not that concerned with it Just like that, and that should be enough to hold it in place. And that's to keep the seat from shifting side to side right there. The whole concept of that was it was to give you a finger pull. That was like one of the dumbest things ever. Just a waste of money. I'm glad they got rid of them. reason I'm doing that is so I don't max out my ratchets. So I usually go one, one wedge and one shim per hip pad. So I'll go like the wedge up in there like that, and then one shim in there like that. That's usually been pretty good for dagger boats for me anyway. By far the best designed hip pads in the industry. I'll argue that with anybody. You guys comment if you think there's a better hip pad out there than dagger hip pads, because I'll argue that with you to you blue in the face. That is, they, they're so good. And it's all because of that little clip in system right there. You see that? I'll just install that backwards. So that's the left side. By the way, you see this hump? That hump goes into the hip right here. 
So this is the right side, this is the left side. I have actually seen people running these backwards, just so you know, and they're like, hey man, my legs are falling asleep, what's going on? Well, you probably got your hip pads in backwards. You know, I get it, you can't know everything. All right, so yeah, this is the left, that's the right. And I like to take these little things and run them in there like that. Just so they quit hanging out of the way. All right, I went ahead and I added more, more hip pad foam. I added my bulkhead foam, I glued it in. I used the Spray 90 to glue it. And then I'm gonna run these little these little pads over the top. Oh man, I always hate messing with those. It's where it's nice to have a knife to get this started. So then I'm gonna run this little pill and stick. God, sometimes these things just do not want to cooperate. So like that, stick it in there. I put padding up in the knees here. So now I've adjusted the bulkhead about where I think I need it. I'm just mashing that, that foam down in there. Oh, that feels good. That feels about perfect right there. So outfitting, I think it's on point. That feels pretty good. And I have paddled the Phantom, so I do know about where my seat position needs to be. What, how much foam, all that, it's pretty consistent. Now what I'm gonna do is do just some finishing cleanup on it, just some finishing touches as far as a cleanup. I'm gonna tighten that up but, and then start You know, I usually up. use some, some cleaning spritz here and get that off and you can see that and this. See how it's taking that brownness out of it. Then I use a 303 I try not to get it on the thigh braces or seat, trust me, you don't want that. Three L three is great. It's it's safe for water. You know, they make it for a marine environment. It's really good for cleaning polyethylene plastic. There's a lot of other videos out there on using this stuff. I recommend it. We'll roll it over. Do the hull. Oh yeah, it feels faster already. You know, 303 will add about 0.6 miles per hour faster in a race. If you 303 your boat right before the race, you guys could put some sort of vegetable oil. You could put some Crisco on there. See how fast that'll make you go. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weld on this too much. I'm just gonna try to like close that little hole up there. It's not a crack all the way through, but it won't take me long to do this. So I'm just gonna like I'm not gonna mess with it too much. So just so you know, I'm just gonna do it enough to like close this up. I cut a little piece of plastic off the rim. And I just got a basic heat gun here. I go on like the number one setting. Very slow, slow heat up. I don't get it like super hot. And then I'm just gonna close it up with a little wax paper. You see what I'm doing? As soon as I start feeling it, seeing it get shiny, I'll pull the heat away. And that's not a bad spot to have a crack like that. And it's not even a crack, it's just like a little open spot. I looked, it's not all the way through.
That's about all I'm going to mess with it. There's really not much. I have to go in from the inside and push it, but that looks pretty good right there. I'm just going to leave it like that. Look at that. All right, everybody, that's pretty much it. That's the entire cleanup on the new boat. I'm gonna go ahead and put the last thing in there, and that's put your, your, your tool down in there. I went ahead and flashed those edges and put that back in there, but yeah, look at that. You can see I did the complete cleanup. It didn't take that long. Closed that little area up there. Nice, came together nicely. It's completely outfitted. Now all I gotta do is go get it on the water. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys for watching. Leave in the comments below if you've ever bought a boat and kind of cleaned it up like this and what you think, you know, what, what you would have done different. So leave in the comments below what you think about the, the, what I did to it here. If it's something that, you know, you'd like, you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and um, I will catch you guys next time. Yeah.